All right, let's talk about lesson 4.7 today. This lesson is on using congruent triangles. So if you don't understand how to do lessons 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6 on how to prove triangles are congruent, you're not going to be able to do this lesson because you have to have congruent triangles. You have to be able to use the congruent triangles. So if you don't know how to get congruent triangles, you're not going to be able to use them. All right, but if you do understand lessons 4-4 and 4-5 and 4-6 using side angle side and side 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 and HL and angle side angle all right, and angle angle side, then using this usually is pretty easy because it doesn't require much more work. All right? The whole lesson is about these five letters right here, okay? C, P, C, T, C. So let me explain what these five letters are. We're going to talk a little bit about them and then I'm going to do a second video that gives some examples, okay? So this first C stands for corresponding. And that's the first C, corresponding. P stands for parts, corresponding parts of. Now, we don't really have an O up here. It's kind of like when we say USA, United States of America. We don't say USOA. Okay, so this little word doesn't get something in there. But the next C, congruent. Okay, corresponding parts of congruent. Now the T, triangles. Now we have another little word that doesn't get a letter, R. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You need to memorize this. This is going to show up on your quiz. It's going to show up on your test. It's going to show up on your midterm. It's going to show up in proofs for a lot of the rest of the chapters. It's going to show up on your final exam probably. You need to know these letters stand for this. And then you need to know when you use them. Here's the main thing you need to understand. Use CPCTC after, that's very important, after you know you have congruent triangles. If you try to use CPCTC before you have congruent triangles, you will get it wrong. Okay, you have to use CPCTC after you know you have congruent triangles. Okay, let's take a look at one really quick example. Um, I might do a second one as well, All right, but then the second video is going to be more of a proof concept. So let's say we have something like this. And we have these marks on our triangles. And I've got another triangle here, and it's got the same marks. Okay. Now we know that these two triangles are congruent because of side, side, side. This is what we learned back in lesson 4.4 and 4.5 and 4.6. So we would say something like this, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. Now we got to get the order right. Remember the order is important. So if I said ABC, I traveled down the two marked side and then the one marked. So I got to go YZX. <clears throat> and that was because of the side, side, side congruence postulate. Right. Now, CPCTC is the next thing we use. So, we already knew all the sides were congruent. What we don't know is we don't know anything about the angles. CPCTC helps us there. So we could say something like angle B is congruent to angle, <clears throat> B is the second letter, Z is the second letter. That's why that order is very important and it helps us out. So angle B is congruent to angle Z. Why is angle B congruent to angle Z? CPCTC. B and Z are corresponding parts. They're in the same position. It's across from the three mark side, across from the three mark side. Or you could say it's between the sides that are marked with one and two. It's between the sides that are marked with one and two. All right. So B and Z are corresponding. They are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We prove the triangles are congruent with side, side, side. So therefore, this tells me that corresponding parts of congruent triangles have to be congruent. And that's why we know that angle B is congruent to angle Z. It's kind of like a shorter version of definition of congruent figures. Remember, definition of congruent figures says every side's congruent, every angle's congruent. Well, we only needed the sides to prove this. 
but then the definition tells me, well, everything else is congruent too, but this is kind of a shorter way of writing that. And that's basically where it's coming from, is this whole idea of definition of congruent figures. Every side, every set of sides, and every set of angles is congruent. Let me give you another real quick example, and then we'll finish this video, and then remember the next video is gonna be like actual proofs, two column proofs with statements and reasons and things like that. So let's draw this triangle here. Okay, I'm gonna draw another triangle here. And I'm going to tell you that this angle is congruent to that angle, and that angle is congruent to that angle. Let me get some letters, M, N, O, P. All right, so are these triangles congruent? Well, if I use my reflexive property right here in the middle, I can say that PN is congruent to PN. Now, the triangles are congruent, so triangle M, P, N is congruent to triangle, if I went this way, M, P, N, I need to go O, P, N, and why would those triangles be congruent? Look at our order. We've got an angle and a side and then an angle, all right in a row. So this would be angle, side, angle, congruence, postulate. And then we can say something new. We could say something like MN is congruent. So what is MN congruent to? First and last letter, first and last, MN, ON. And our reason for that would be C, P, C, T, C. Okay, corresponding parts. Corresponding, they're in the same position. First and third, first and third. Of congruent triangles, yes, we knew the triangles were congruent because of this. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we can say these pieces are congruent. We could also say angle M is congruent to angle O because of C, P, C, T, C. We could say MP is congruent to OP because of CP, CTC, right? Basically, any piece that you did not already know is congruent, once you've proven your triangles are congruent, then you can say those pieces are also congruent with CP, CTC. That's the whole idea of lesson 4.7, right? So short video for the first part, just explaining it. It's probably a slightly longer video for the second part because we're going to do maybe two or three proofs with this, all right? So make sure you watch both videos.